chosen this morning. First Peter 2, 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. This verse contains an announcement and a resulting action. The first part of the verse declares who we are. The second shows the one who brought it to pass and what we must do as a result of what's happened. If we were to leave off the second part of the verse, it would read simply, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. That almost makes it sound self-sufficient because it focuses on you. We know what it says, and that's not the case. But it sounds almost something like a motivational speaker would say where he focuses on you. You are this you can this, and your, your focus is turned inward at yourself. But Peter wrote this verse with God in mind. Thus the second part of the verse, Amen. you are this, so testify of the one who made you who you are. Without him, you're none of these things. So noise abroad what God has done for you. Any, anything God does is made known. It's noise abroad, and that's the way the scripture says it, noise it abroad. And it's worth doing so. Remember when, when God delivered Israel from Egypt, when they got to Jericho, the first city. Over 40 years later, Rahab says, we heard what God did for you. God worked. People heard about it. <clears throat> people heard about the wisdom that God gave Solomon. Queen Sheba came because the wisdom that God had given him, people heard about it. Especially people heard about the birth of Jesus. We've been going through this on Friday nights. The shepherds heard what had happened. They went into the city and they told those they knew. Anna the prophetess saw Jesus and she told those who waited for redemption in Jerusalem. So in these things, whatever was happening was being attributed to God and it was being made known. <clears throat> in the text we have, God has done a work in us. <clears throat> He's put a mark on us that says chosen. Another word that's used in this verse is peculiar and I, I like that word, peculiar. The first time I'd ever heard of it was I had to introduce Brother Given's sermon on divine nomenclature when he just focused on those words, and peculiar was one of them. I didn't know what it meant, but that's one of my favorite words now, peculiar. With something that's peculiar, it makes people stop what they're doing and look at it. Something peculiar goes by, they'll stop and look because they don't know what it is. So when God uses the word, it's within the context of being set apart. The world, you use the word peculiar in a derogatory sense. That's peculiar. I don't want to have anything to do with that. But God uses it on the positive side of things because you're different because of grace. That's what peculiar means when God uses it. A person chosen by God is awfully strange to the world. <clears throat> this leads me to my next point. People often inspect something that's strange to them, foreign to them. They don't know what it, Maybe they'll keep their distance, but they, they'll try to learn something about what's unfamiliar to them. So as, as having to do with the body of Christ, some, someone might notice that you're just overall different than they are. Maybe, maybe in the workplace, they'll see you carry yourself differently. You won't, you won't go do this with them. You won't hang out with these type of people, you know. But you're just overall different. Maybe they'll ask you why. Why, why are you different? And there's an opportunity to show forth his praises and give an answer for the hope that is in you. The answer to give these curious people is that I've been brought out of darkness into marvelous light. And then tell them who did it. <clears throat> We've been brought out of darkness into marvelous light. And that seems strange to them because they're still in the darkness. And when we look at them, they, they, they more than just seem strange. They are strange. We're in the light. We can see things as they really are. And it's strange to be in the darkness. So it's, it's true both ways. Peculiar both ways. Our positions are different. Someone in a dark room is going to do a lot of stumbling around and they could injure themselves. Because unsurety combined with blindness leads to unproductivity. You're not fruitful. Someone in the light can see where they are, where they're going, what they're doing, and they can walk with confidence. They can be productive in that environment. <clears throat> so in spiritual darkness, you are dead and therefore unproductive. In spiritual life, in spiritual light, rather, you have life and you're responsive to God. You're alive to Him. So we've been brought into marvelous light. We haven't just been brought out of darkness into dim light. We've been brought into marvelous light. So the transition here is dark, pitch dark, pitch black. You can't see your hand in front of your face. It's so dark. You've been brought out of that into marvelous, everything made known light. 
Brother Gavin tells this a lot. He went, he went down into a cave and everything is dark and someone lit a match and everyone saw that match. Compared to a greater light, the match doesn't have all that much light. But coming out of darkness, you can see it well. So this is my next point. We've been chosen and changed. When you come out of darkness, even a little light is seen well. Come into a bright light, a marvelous light, and your eyes will have to adjust. Your eyes will become accustomed to the darkness. Then you come into a bright light, and it'll seem blinding for a while until your eyes adjust. So when God brought us into his marvelous light, our spiritual eyes had to adjust before we could see what God had to show us. In one of C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia books, the main group of characters is on a trip at sea. As they travel, the light gets brighter gradually each day, and their eyes have to adjust. But as their eyes adjust, the light gets brighter, they, they get used to the bright light, they see things that they hadn't before. They were there, they just couldn't see it, and the light revealed it. And because they were changed, they could see it. We move from glory to glory, but you have to be changed in order for that in order for that stage change to be productive. There will always be more for us to see and understand while we're in this body. <clears throat> Hindsight is best sight. If you do something, then you can look back on it and say, I probably should have done that. I shouldn't have done that. You know, When you look back on it, you can see what you should have done real well. And then we'll have a new body that will be able to fully comprehend what God has done. That's going to be the ultimate hindsight. We're going to be able to fully understand what God has done. And part of what God has done that we can't fully comprehend right now has been done in us. So in part, the work of God has been done in us in the grand scheme of things. Isn't that a reason to show forth his praises? He's brought you out of darkness into marvelous light. Talk about it. It's worth talking about. In Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, Christian and Hopeful are on the enchanted ground. If they fall asleep, then that'll be their end. No celestial city for them if they fall asleep. But they stay awake on these enchanted grounds by rehearsing what Christ did for them on the cross. That's what took away their dreariness, and they were able to keep on going. Their hearts burned within them. The, script, the scripture said that of the two on the road to Emmaus. So whatever God does is worth examining and talking about. And we've been chosen. Live like you're chosen. God does, I have, I'll have a hard time believing that you're chosen and you're still living like you used to. God doesn't choose and you keep living in sin if he really chooses. He chooses you and he changes you for the better. So God is the reason we're chosen. The power of Christ rests on us as a result. So glorify your Father in heaven. We are his workmanship. Go to J3.